With a population of around 400,000, Tongji is the largest city in Shan State. It's situated in an intermontane basin, 1,436 metres above sea level. And it's this higher location with its cooler climate that has attracted the British administrators here in 1894. And today it continues as an administration centre, a service centre and a military centre. This is not really a location that tourists flock to, although some do come and use it as a base to explore the surrounding areas. For instance, there are tours to nearby vineyards, and Lake Inlay is only an hour's drive away. But within the city itself, the main interests would centre around the markets and the various religious establishments. So first we visit the daily outdoor market, and this is mainly selling fresh produce, sourced from local villages. And there's a range of freshwater fish available, and these mostly come from the fishermen of Lake Inlay. And there's plenty of dried fish and dried eels for sale as well. Although it's still a tropical climate, the cooler temperatures do allow more temperate vegetables to be grown. In fact, we could almost call this the tomato capital of Myanmar. Besides tomatoes, the main agricultural products in the area are potato, tea, beans, damson plums and various seasonal fruits. Nearby is the covered market. Here there are many stalls specialising in various forms of clothing, often imported from Thailand or China. And if the rumours are correct, there's also some black market goods available. And as with all markets, there's a food stall area. And there's a good variety of local fast food products. To me, this looked like local donuts, but I can't be sure. As Buddhism, is the major religion of Myanmar. There are a number of different pagodas and temples and monasteries in Tongji. And this is the Sulamuni Pagoda. This paya or pagoda is modelled on one from Bagan. And it was built as recently as 1994 to celebrate the centenary of Tongji.
none of the Buddhist paya in Tanji has great antiquity, for they have all been built since the British settled in the area in the late 19th century. It's quite common in Myanmar for caves to be converted into shrines to Buddha and this grotto is no exception. Here in the dimly lit cave we find dozens and dozens of Buddha statues and small shrines. Back on the surface we enter this stupa and we find more statues to Buddha. Although he is almost blind, this elderly Sikh sits as a guard at the door to the local Sikh temple. But I was able to pass and was given the opportunity to see inside the temple. Many Sikhs originally came to Burma, as it was then called, to work for the British in various roles and occupations. And this structure looks like a Hindu temple from South India, but it's actually Buddhist. Instead of rows of Hindu gods, as you would find in South India, each alcove contains a statue of Buddha. There are four Muslim mosques in Tanji, and during my visit to this mosque, I met this delightful elderly gentleman. He had arrived to work for the British during the colonial days. Tanji has a number of Christian denominations, Roman Catholic, Anglican, and Baptist, amongst others. There is the choice of several modern hotels. My local friends had booked me into this hotel and it was more than adequate for my needs, and compared favourably with any accommodation I had in Myanmar. What did interest me was finding a Gideon's Bible in the bedside drawer, just as I would in many Western hotels, and this was the original translation done by Ando Niram Judson, who in 1814 became one of the first missionaries to Burma. He spent almost 40 years as a missionary in Burma, and obviously his legacy has continued. So this was just one of many interesting experiences I had while visiting this mountain town in Myanmar.